we know Auckland's facing a problem of um, accelerated population growth um, over time. Uh, we're, by 2040, we're getting two and a half million people. This is, um, this is from Stats New Zealand, but Auckland Council has predicted that 2.2 to 2.5 um, million by 2040. And Auckland, aware, Auckland Council knows this problem, awares it, and they actively try to solve this problem. Um, in the current Auckland plan, um, they predict there's some um, 400,000 um, dwelling shortage. Um, and what, what they're planning to do is using a compact city approach to um, curb, curb this um, problem by rezoning the existing land um, urban, in the urban settlement for, um, for the development of about 200,000 um, dwellings. Um, with about 200,000 shortfall within the, um, to develop within the um, urban city, um, the metro urban limit. Um, oh, sorry, I was thinking the lights would be t to be off. Matthew, can I have the lights off, please? Um, and here's what we have in pink, pinkish is our um, current settlement with um, green is our um, greenfield for the um, reserve for the um, future development. But all this sort of turned to custard when some of the um, residents re revolt against the idea of the 200,000 in the, in the um, current settlement. Um, they, want, they don't want it to be too intensive. So it seems like it's going, going to go back to the original draft, that previous draft of only 80,000 extra. So um, plan B, what we have is likely to be 320,000 short for, for the next um, 30 years of um, extra land for the future at um, 22,500 hectares. Um, Auckland Council also, um, in the plan, also have um, mentioned there is 600 <coughs> um, hectares of brownfield sites f earmarked for business and industrial development. Um, so what I'm thinking is, do we, um, do we really know that these sites are suitable for just industrial and business? What if there's another method of looking at it for, to bring out its be um, better tissue? potential of these um, sites. So that brings to, to my um, research question, how can we use geodesign for brownfield redevelopment? Um, basically, how do we approach um, brownfield sites? Well, brownfield sites, um, literature mentioned that they have many stakeholders and also many factors that needs to be um, met as well as resolved. So, um, literature was mentioned um, to solve these issues and meeting the needs and wants that they um, pr promote the idea of a multi-attribute um, approach to, the, to these um, things. And that brings me to um, a multi-criteria analysis, which is what they call a likely solution for, for the um, resolution. Um, Multi-criteria analysis or multiple criteria decision analysis is a subset of operational research which deals with um, application of, of uh, analyticals for um, decision making or basically it's sort of like a decision support or expert, sy expert system. Um, why using it? Um, use, use, a multi use MCDA can help compare and contrast the information between each subset and identify any overlapping attributes to find that optimum or um, sustainable site for this. Um, other uses of, of this is in, in um, lands, things like landscape assessment, site selection, and things like network-based analysis. Um, 
So, and then what is GI design? GI design is a planning method that is coupled with um, the creation of design proposals with systems thinking and digital technologies. So it's basically we're using technology to, to um, bring together things like um, geoinformation science, CAD, landscape architecture, and other disciplines that might be useful for, for this topic. Um, so working with Babbage, I'll be examining the current development, identify grey and brownfield sites with um, the development and ecological potentials, and evaluate those potentials. So what is brownfield site? Brownfield site is those um, unused or underutilised sites that could be contaminated and might need um, remediation for it to revitalise. Um, some of them, for some, they might not be um, contaminated at all. It's just maybe a building on it um, for, as, a, as a site. So why develop it? The, we do, uh, sorry. Um, what is brownfield with develop, development? It's that we develop a land from one use to another, or we could say it's sort of like a rezoning of the land. Um, now, why develop brownfield sites? It improves local ecology, it improves health to the, um, to, and well-being, as well as property values. It increases the land um, use sustainability, I mean, by removing actual and potential contaminants from the um, site, we improve the local ecology, and same thing to health and, and other things, as mentioned, like removing, give a better um, location back to the to the um, site, we might get better rating from, from that area and this kind of things. Um, so, brownfield sites in Auckland. Um, for us, our brownfield sites are quite different to the rest of the world. We don't have those large um, manufacturing or production um, um, sites like the US or, or Europe. Um, because those ones, we, when we see, those are really, really toxic con contaminated. But we do still have some contaminated sites. Um, the Ministry of Environment has a hail list that lists some of the potential industries that, ha um, that can contaminate the environment. And also, some of the close um, landfills will have the potential of um, contamination. Other sources that I, I identify my um, brownfield sites are like um, other council publications, paper, um, paper um, publications, um, proceedings and co um, conference proceedings, as well as new newspaper articles. Um, if this is quite small, we'll zoom into an um, isthmus view of some of the close landfills that are, are identified from, from some of the things. Um, as we see, most of those now becomes parks if they're not um, industry zones. Um, using the hail list from the um, Ministry of Environment, I basically cross-reference that to the business activities in Auckland and map out these kind of sites. And yes, Auckland um, Airport is part of it because of the fuel usage in, in, in everything with, um, associated with um, petrochemical. But whether to develop it or not is another story. Um, other brownfield sites, um, these are the sites that um, Auckland Regional Council mapped out. Um, I don't know what they are, but they've mapped out, so I added in as well. Uh, so, um, this is a list of my um, brownfield sites. Well, my, my list, it's not complete. It's just based on the information I found. Um, if I overlay that with uh, um, future zoning, we get um, a variety of zoning uh, on these brownfield sites. And pulling them together, I'm, I div divide into two sections. One is developable and one is not. Um, so to develop these, these sites, um, planners and scholars in the, in the world, they suggest some criteria to use. Um, it's go back, it goes back to the um, core 
issues such as um, social, um, economics, environment, they, um, that brings us that sustainability, mm -hmm. and also land res resources and infrastructure. Um, so for these criteria, I sort of um, collect data on things like um, demographic work, um, working age group, um, the distribution of working age group, uh, median income, um, things like car ownership, that kind of thing. Um, for wealth, I am not too sure what to do, so I thought the people who live in the wealthy uh, um, suburbs or wealthy streets must be uh, um, um, better, better uh, in, in economics than, than the other. Um, environmental side, um, things like rivers and streams, parks and reserves, and even trees, street trees. Um, for land resources, um, that what I use is um, parcel sizes, land parcel, um, the unitary zoning, and as well as um, things like um, slopes. In the infrastructure, infrastructure side, um, things like um, utilities, power, water, um, proximity for um, transportation as well as public transport system, as well as um, services to nodes. So bringing all this information together, I, I use GIS. Um, with that, I separate into four processes. Um, the spatial process, the weighting process, the weighted outcome, as well as an overlaying process. In the spatial process, I divide into two sections. One is the network um, proximity, and another is spatial. For network, I'm just using a basic distance. Not For this um, presentation, I'm just using a basic um, distance rather than using the proper network impedance to give you the um, travel, travel distance. This is just a sort of like a, um, yeah. Um, so for, um, for a small example, we'll zoom back into the isthmus. Um, I'm looking at the Euclidean value or the gradient value from the station out. Um, so here we have is, um, the train stations and the bus stops. So with that, I class, with that um, gradient value, I classify it into a solid value of one to nine. And I come up, come up with the two le uh, um, lifts. Um, for the spatial process, it's, um, once again, it's very similar to the um, network process. Uh, um, basically, for now, it's um, also using just basic distance without going into too, uh, too much into the, um, the next work phase. Um, with that, I'm saying what if I use the distance for the, um, for the CBD, the distance the, uh, value from CBD as well as from e water edge, proximity to the wa water. And once again, I, we classify it into a solid number from one to nine. With that um, ge um, spatial process, I go into the um, weighting process. The weighting process I use is the analytical hierarchy process. Um, it's a basically peer-wise uh, um, comparison. So it's like if A is better than B or, and B is better than C, then A must be better than C with that kind of comparison. And with that, I use, it puts into a matrix, and that matrix gets normalized, and then I get a weighting out of that value. Um, for this here, I have the CBD, coast, train, and bus in, in a different weight. So I say CBD is most important, and then bus travel is the least important out of the four. And then this is um, normalized in, in the second uh, um, table. And finally, it's averaged out on, on the third table of, of the weight. Um, that weight and then feed back into GIS with all that information about, about the, um, the values 
and we come out with a, zone, a zoning map like this from one to nine, showing its value. Okay. Um, with that, we overlay it with the brownfield sites, and, and we sh we're seeing sites that are red as the ones that we saw before that's undevelopable, but everything else, we have a sort of like a value of one to, to five. Um, going forward, this is something like a pre preliminary outcome where information, we can click on the, cut, on the site itself and it will bring up all this information of even of the value and, and things. So w uh, depending on our criteria, what value we'll get. Um, so that is my research topic, how to use GIS or geo design for brownfield redevelopment. So um, in summary, I talked about how data was collected for um, brownfield sites, um, what type of criteria is needed for um, use for MCDA, um, how weights were generated and how it's put together in GIS. Um, so coming out and for my next um, topic, um, next workshop will be trying to put all these together into a um, toolbox for model, with model builder and test out on a um, case study and then use the geo design, other geodesign techniques to test that um, site. And thank you very much. Brownfields can be redeveloped into. Was it was it limited just to residential? No, no, uses? absolutely not. I mean, for now, for this, just what what I'm thinking is depends on your criteria. So, I mean, what I showed before is we sh I showed about power, like the power um, network. So, if say industrial for industrial site we need that much power, then we use that criteria. Oh yeah, okay. And we can uh, bring it right. Up. So you're and measuring attributes, and yes. then. Um, yeah, because that's the thing that struck me. Proximity to coastline might be really good for residential, but for industrial, yeah. it might not matter. Yeah. And yeah. it was just an example. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is just yeah. a light example that I'm. Yeah, yeah. so it's just a question yeah. as to yeah. yeah. what yeah. the output. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you seem to put a little bit of emphasis on the starting with on the growth population. And it doesn't kind of become clear to me what is the percentage? Like, if Oakland is one square meter, what is the percentage of brownfield in Oakland? Um, overall, uh, At, sorry, overall, I think it's um, 2,600 hectares of um, brownfield from what I get here. Percentage ways? I'm not too sure. And I'm asking percentage because you are talking about population growth. Yep. And you are saying, okay, we need to increase the population of Auckland, or it's going to increase by 50%. Mm -hmm. If you are using the brown field and you don't know, or maybe you know, well, obviously you know, but you don't know here right now, that is only a 10% or a 1%. I think it's less than, that, less than 5%. Less than 5%. Yeah. The, task of converting, <coughs> let's say, the brown field to residential is going to have a minuscule impact on the population growth of Auckland. Do you follow what I'm... Yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes, yes. So that's a kind of a, a flawed thing that that seems to be I'll take that in mind. For, forgotten on the yes, start. Yes, yes. From the start, everything works out perfectly. I think, and um, I like visually all the diagrams and all the things, but that's not really professional. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, when you base the presentation or something in something technical, you need to make sure that you are not building a castle without having yes. the first question answered. Yes, yes. Just building on that, I think it was useful, because you did spend a fair bit of time at the beginning talking about the contrast 
I mean the, the, the context, sorry, and what we're trying to do and the extent of growth mm. and the number of houses that we want to be inside the footprint. You didn't actually come back to that and what the implications on what your analysis was on that, which is I guess part of the Yes. Yes. Um, yes, that was um, that's where I was thinking for the next part where I do my analysis so that I can use the another tool tool sets to work to work on like work on that that answer. So, yeah. so I'm sorry, I haven't got the answer for this. For yeah. this. But I think it is more of a hypothesis than an answer. Because if the brown field is only like a 5%, but the, <clears throat> the output that you need for the, to accommodate the growth population is a minimum of 60%, it's, you I are working in a solution that doesn't have any impact whatsoever. I think, I think yeah, maybe the way to kind of address the problem is, I, you mentioned that currently the brownfield sites tend to become parks, mm -hmm. for example. So yes. all you're trying to say is there sh should be a better use for yeah. at least some of these, mm -hmm. these areas. So rather than tying it into you know, growth. population yeah. okay. you know, yeah. growth, yeah. Yeah. just maybe that you know that it, it's more sustainable and you know it's more efficient okay. use of you know this land that yeah. will otherwise just be turned into but even then yeah. there is a kind of we have plenty of land well we don't have plenty of land within the mm. urban no. the sea Not whatever you called it Not the the in the, the, uh, yes hmm? within the urban Area. I mean, that was yes. his point right at the start. Because um, what I was thinking to do the next next part is finding sites and then compare and contrast the height from the from the zoning. So say, say like right now our zoning is up to that much that much height allowable, and then what if I what if I compare that to a, a higher higher um, Density and higher um, development. That kind of I was thinking to do something like that yeah. to to see how much relief can, can it give. You see, I I, I think that you're jumping ahead. I mean, because the question I had when I looked at it was, that, how why have you got these criteria? And I understand now you were just using it to demonstrate the pro the model and the process. Yes. But I think you know the location. Is, is going to largely dictate the use rather than the height. I don't know. I, I mean, I think that's the next stage is to actually de develop those criteria mm -hmm. and then see how they work. Because I, you know, yeah, it just it seems quite early days, really. Yeah. <laughs> For a second, I, you know, there seems to be a long way to go to me. I, I mean, I think it's useful. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but I'm not sure to have an idea next. of what do you want to use this tool for like you are kind of making a tool yep. mm. and at the moment it feels to me that you don't know the use I'm making this amazing tool yeah. but I don't know what I'm going to use it for how to use it oh. yeah. so I'll be uncoupled with the population hmm? uh, so uh, my next, wo next um, workshop will should uncouple this with population because mm. right now I've been um, mm. concentrating on the population That's growth. Interesting, because I kind of think not completely. Not, not completely. completely. No, no. Because no. okay. there is value in what your model, what you're proposing to do, may not in a, in and of itself be applied. Um, you know, across all brown field sites mm -hmm. to solve the population challenges, mm -hmm. but it may be very well applied in certain, you know, what you're trying to work out mm -hmm. in certain brown field sites, right. yeah. which will deliver um, particular value in addressing population right. challenges. Yeah. Okay. But it may only be one, it, it would be used, you know, in, in those circumstances where it fits, it's mm -hmm. like the best solution for the, the right location or whatever. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it like, seems like one tool amongst many tools to deal with population. So that's one advantage, but it's not the only reason <coughs> why you, it's about you know efficiency. And um, so I think it, for me, I would say that mm -hmm. it's, it's, it seems like a really useful um, 
tool in the tool kit. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, not but not in an, in and of itself is it going to be the way that we solve, you know, the population. The population, right. you know. And I, I, yeah, and I didn't understand, you know, why height, because you you don't want to rely on the current zoning. No, no. Either. No, because what what I, I mean from from this from this um, research, I mean looking at the problem and reading news articles and things like that, I'm thinking like if we say, just hypothetically, we want to build another fifty thousand houses somewhere, then we we will have a site. We site, I mean we will need a site that for a certain size, and we probably can still use this tool to say I want this site, so, um, size of a site. I want this kind of impact or, or minimise this kind of impact and then I probably can still put, put it through and select a, a site. It might not be um, Brownfield, it could be Greenfield. But, but as long, but as long, but it's yeah, your project is, yes. Yes. is about Brownfield. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So you can now change that. the rule. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, I think you, you should be concentrating on you know, potential uses of brownfield of the site. Brownfield. Okay. But not specifically. Mm, yeah. And not specifically residential, yeah. Residential. Yeah, it's not for specifically for residential. It's actually thinking, that's why I was thinking to, that's why you're using um, environmental factors, things like even um, individual trees, that could be a part of a tree network for connect, connecting um, canoes with um, Waitakere. So it's sort of like, depends on the factors. Mm. I, yeah. I think you need to think carefully about direction because I, I can't see a clear path at the moment. Anyone else can? Yes. It's a useful tool. <laughs> it, it, it seems like you, you're doing two things, and, and one is exploring a, a GIS tool like this with various overlays of accessibility to various amenities, and like um, coastline and, and proximity transport networks and things like that. The other thing is you've got a, a focus very deliberately on brownfields, of which you, you've sourced and you've found a bunch of sites, mm -hmm. and then you're using your tool to say, well, how does each location, each brownfield location, relate to these various attributes that you've measured? Yeah. <coughs> and then questions are, well, so what? Or what would you do with it? Or how would you use it? I think it's great that you're learning how to use these overlays mm -hmm. and and things that's and, and the tools around that. that that's really valuable. It it seems to me like. Anyone looking for what might be the most best use for a particular site would need to use a tool like this. So it's really good you're learning it and, and you can apply it to that. <coughs> Israel, what a particular brownfield site should be used for, however, is something like quite quite different. Uh, you, you might have what's best for the community and society and the, and the economy and, and the region versus what's what's best for the landowner who might be trying to maximise their profit. So there might be a real difference between a commercial best interest and, and, a, and a classic example of that contrast might be, at the moment, housing is boom, 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 but uh, maybe maybe that area is underserved in terms of access to goods and services and some um, a variety of jobs, and, and at the moment they have to travel a long way for that sort of thing. So um, if, if, if this model could perhaps highlight, well, here goes some regions that are very underserved in terms of access to goods and services and jobs and amenities, and hey, we have a brownfield site here. Why don't we try to incentivise that brown site not to build more homes? Because your context is actually pointing Too towards high. that way, by yes. the way. Yes. And maybe areas where we shouldn't be building more homes, but providing those other amenities. But to do that, you're probably wanting to get into prices and, and things like that, more, more economic locational okay. yeah, uh, which yeah. is, you is really another, want another kind of, thing altogether. Um, if this is going to be a tool, you are going to have to put a lot more stuff into it, like, yeah. you know, prices, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, whatever. Depends on, on so it depends on the, the depends on the outcome, though. It depends on the application. So, so yeah. as you mentioned, then we'll look at the land land values over over the different different areas and. I don't know. I mean, I, I think you need to decide you know, what the outcome you want, you know. If it's What's amenity value, yeah. then, yeah. you know, yeah. the financial value may not be mm. relevant. But I think you need, and then you need to have a real way, you know, 
way forward to mm -hmm. set, test it. But I think you're going to have to decide that you're looking for a particular outcome and then build the criteria around that mm -hmm. and test it. I yeah, think that's the way the forward. The flexibility of the tool. It's like, you know, how you set it up to. Yeah. It sets that you want to set it up to measure this and then you use these criteria. Then you mm -hmm. think, I want, to, I want to evaluate it from a different yeah. perspective. So you set it yeah. up differently again. So it could be your, you know, ecological forest right. linkages. I mean, you could say, I want to test the brownfield sites to see which are yeah. useful for that. Uh, just to explain, maybe, Kim, I mean, the genesis of the project was talking to um, a colleague at Cambridge. Yeah. So they're looking at they're looking for quite a conventional tool for a developer to find the best use, use of the site. Yeah, find the best site. I know. Find brownfield sites for, for housing. You know, so where are the brown So sites, that was the which we can inception. Use. So that, that, was the, that was the kind of genesis of it. And then we started thinking, well, can we also, are there something like you're saying, like, like you're saying, are there social values or environmental values, mm -hmm. or, you know, which we can kind of lay into this, um, mm -hmm. this kind of process and make it richer and deeper, and even for a developer who's like, wants to kind of get, you know, the most money, you know, the least money, best site, all yeah, sure. yeah, there is also, he can also see, he can also help him see, well, actually, this is close to a bus <coughs> stop, or it's close mm. to a railway station, or it actually has a nice ecological habitat next to it, or, you know, mm. and, so, and these things actually can give value as well. Yeah. So mm. I think that's the history of the project. So you, mm. so you can see that Kevin's kind of gone, this is the kind of process of getting into it. Yeah. Know, you see, mm. you know, so it's, it's got, it's, which then leads to the criteria. Yeah. Like, like take for instance, uh, there's a specialist that figures out where, where should McDonald's go, and they have a yeah. whole bunch of yeah. go no go criteria, um, which the is multi. which is yes, learned by trial and error over a long, yeah. long time. And for that particular use, they they know what are the relevant criteria and the weightings, basically for that one particular use. If, if the question here is residential use, uh, yeah, talk to developers or, or some economists that have found how sensitive the. the the commercial viability of houses is, is a function of different amenities. That gets you your weight, and then you've already got the tool ready to go to, to plug it in. And that's, that's going to be a big next phase. Is that the second half of your thing to try and find some some informed weights for a particular, presumably residential purpose? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, don't, yeah, I think it should be landscape related, personally. <laughs> and it'd be easier to, <laughs> to do than, than going down. Well, I mean, what is the, the balancing point where your tool will be able to establish if it is better to leave the brownfield as it is or to develop it into something else? I mean, could you make a tool? To kind of pinpoint, you know, that, like I want to do McDonald's, so you press the, the key, and <laughs> you know, this one is like no, you have to leave it. If you want to fill all this with McDonald's, none of them, of them are because of <laughs> this reason. Um, yeah. Yes and no. Um, the thing is, most of like depend. Once again, depends on the purpose. We need that um, base data set. I mean, say McDonald's, we look, then we look at the surrounding population, say, or things like um, um, competition, you know, all sorts. We need that underlying uh, um, property before we build some. The point is that that's already there. Yeah. People already have that. Like, yes. You know, yes. Brady Nixon, you know, yes, yes, yes. countdown. I mean, he gave a lecture on you know, what are the criteria for a countdown. Yeah. You know, very specific, you know, the cancer of coming home from work, you know.
criteria overlay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I guess just uh, a little valuable comments, but I guess uh, oh, Kevin works in a, in a very specific way. So, what, the way I understand it, probably not very well either, but what he says, he did a, a lot of research for different types of uh, brownfield redevelopment, what sort of criteria was, were used. And he made a big list for, for different types of brownfield redevelopment. These are the criteria. Okay. He collected the data, uh, studied the brownfield sites and said, for example, if these were the criteria for, if they were for residential, and if they had these weightings, mm -hmm. then this would be the result. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that these are the criteria. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I'm not quite clear whether he will leave that to the user to decide, mm -hmm. or he will decide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it, 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 to, to some extent you have to decide, otherwise it becomes like software. Well, I think that's that's the difficulty, isn't it? What what are you trying to sell to us? The outcome or the software? Uh, in a yeah. moment, it's definitely software. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a methodology. Yeah, it's a methodology. It, yes. Yeah. Well, that's what, yes, yeah. yes. For the time being, the environmental uh, criteria is still yeah. missing, but he's developing. I mean, so. is it worth looking back at? I'm trying to think of the author now. Planning. Canadian, Scottish. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. McHarg. Look at. Yeah. yeah. And look at McHarg in relation to this. And how you would reapply that, maybe. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, there are more contemporary models than. Yeah, exactly, there are. But that's my era. <laughs> But there are, there are, there's quite a lot of, you know, systems models, environmental systems models that might be worth looking at, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, yeah. Kevin, that was great. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>